Let's talk about student accounts in GradeLink. In the upper left hand corner, click on the Students tab. The list of your students appears to the left. Click on the name of a student. This will bring up the basic demographic information for that student. Across the top, you have first and last name, the grade, division. Schools can use divisions a number of different ways. Schools large enough to have, for example, two sixth grade classes may designate one as 6A and the other as 6B. Schools that have an honors track may use the letter H to indicate students on the honors track. Schools with preschool or pre-kindergarten programs may use the number three to indicate preschool or pre-kindergarten three-year-old or four to indicate a four-year-old. Under status, the status of the student during the school year should be active. That indicates the student is attending school, is being marked for attendance, and is completing assignments and earning grades. Should a student leave your school, the best thing to do is change the status from active to inactive. Changing the student to inactive does several things. First, it removes the student from your list of active students. Second, it does not affect any grades or attendance data that the student has acquired while attending your school. When a student is marked as inactive, his or her name will be removed from the attendance sheet. And on the teacher's grade sheet, the student's name will change to gray and will move to the bottom of the list of students. Should the student return to your school, simply change the status from active, for rather from inactive, to active, and then change the grade as necessary. The ID number can be whatever format the school uses. The username is what students and parents will use to log into the parent portal in in GradeLink. And then the password is automatically generated by GradeLink. However, a full administrator can also change a password if a parent requests it. And then to the far right, under the word lock, there is a box which you will see a check mark in if a student or parent has locked him or herself out of GradeLink. Information for parents is about halfway down the page. There's space for two parents or guardians, plus a phone number and an email for each, and also a third space for a phone number, which can be used, for example, for a home landline. Perhaps parents each have a cell phone, and then there is also a, a landline at home. GradeLink will link siblings together under a single family number when the last names of the students match and the parents' phone numbers and email addresses match. So notice when Julie's name is selected, 
Amelia shows as the sibling. Same with Amelia. When her name is selected, you'll see Julie's name as the sibling. Should you have any incidences where you have siblings with different last names? To link them together under one set of parents or guardians, just make sure the family number is the same for both. For example, if Bobby Hope turns out to be related to Anthony Harris. Just make sure that Bobby Hope's family number is the same as that of Anthony Harris, which is number 12. So change the number to 12. And then click on the Save button. Above, I should say to the right of the demographics button, is a context button. If a family would like to include grandparents, aunts and uncles, or trusted neighbors as emergency or pickup contacts for your students, you can do so by adding the contact name here, the contact address here, and then indicate the relationship also indicate whether or not the contact is to serve as an emergency contact or is authorized or not permitted to pick up a student to the right of the contacts button there is an addresses button this will allow you to enter more than one address for a student. Perhaps the parents are no longer together and each maintains a separate address. That can be noted in grade link. Under the counseling tab, This is where student discipline incidents can be reported. The events are filled in below. You can enter the date the incident took place, the location, who's referring the incident, and what type of incident took place. These pull-down fields can be changed. If you go to the Administrator tab, click on it, and to the left, number 16 is Counseling Incident Types. Click on it. And these are the different incident types currently in the file for your school. To change any of them, for example, if disrespect is not a problem at your school, you may wish to go ahead and delete it. Just click on it and then click on the delete button. To add an item to this list, Click on the Add button, fill in the item in the code line, and then click on the Save button. A description of the incident can go into this field. And then as an administrator, this History and Notes field is available for you, should you wish to keep any information 
about this incident private and therefore unable to be seen by your teachers. Below the incident description is the ability to indicate any action taken as a result. So if a student, for example, as a result of the incident received a timeout, you can select timeout and then indicate over here the duration of the timeout. Perhaps it was for 10 minutes. Select 10 and then minutes. Click on the save button and the report gets added to the discipline records list. Next to the counseling button is a medical button. The first item is for exams. You can record office visits or various screenings. Next to the exams button is an immunizations button where immunizations can also be recorded. The immunization field is a drop-down menu. You can select the immunization that's appropriate. Next to that is the immune status button. This is where you can certify that the student's immunization requirements have been met. Click on the All Requirements Are Met button, fill in your name as administrator, and then using the Reports button to the far right side, you can click on Run Refresh Report, and it will create a school immunization record for that student. The medications button can be used to list any medications that a student may need to take at school. To the right is a history button. Should the student have any health concerns, these can be noted here and made available for your teachers to view. To the right of the medical button, up at the top, is a prospects button. Anytime an interested family fills out the prospective family form, this is where the information is placed. At any time, your admissions director or registrar can access this information. Next to Prospects is a button called View Export. Clicking on this and then clicking over to the right on the Login Info button will produce a letter for each of your students that can be given to parents. And this letter contains login information. Login information is in this box. So just like staff, parents will need school ID, username, and password in order to access the parent portal within Gradelink. These letters can be printed by clicking on the print button in the upper left corner. You may also choose to print them only for a particular grade level. 
And if you have families who are more comfortable with Spanish than English, click on the box next to Espanol and remove the check next to English and it will translate this page into Spanish. Clicking on the print button will print one page for each student. In addition, in view slash export, if you look over to the left, there's a roster button. Clicking on this button will bring up a roster of your students. This can also be converted to an Excel spreadsheet. In the upper right corner of the report, there is a button with a small green X in it. Clicking on it will convert this to an Excel spreadsheet. All pages within Gradelink have a Help button in the upper right-hand corner. Clicking on the Help button will bring up help topics unique to this particular page. Also at the very bottom, you'll see an item that says click for additional help. Clicking on this will take you to help.gradelink.com, which is Gradelink's complete help site. Student classes will be listed to the right-hand side underneath the photo area. In addition to the student schedule, you will also see the current grade the student is earning in each class. To add a photo of your students, click on the Add button to the lower left corner of the photo area. Select the photo and then Gradelink will upload it to this photo area. To add a new student, click on the Add New button at the top of your list of students. Then fill in the information is required. Gradelink will automatically default to the next available ID number and username and will automatically assign a password. To get a login information sheet for parents for just this one student, click on the Login Info button above the Status field. And so you have the students page in Gradelink.